So my topic or the title of my webinar presentation is that benchmarking not the goal but a tool. And this is very much based on my experience on the organizations who say that they are benchmarking. They are usually large organizations and very wealthy organizations. And they have heard that it's important and glorious to benchmark. And for small and medium-sized organizations or organizations who feel being agile, it's not very attractive. It doesn't sound attractive to start benchmarking or use benchmarking services. So, um, anyways, I think that it's not that complicated thing that it looks. And I'm trying to explain how it can be done much easier than somewhere in the past. So it should not be considered heavy and ceremonious process, but part of everyday work. And then some benefits that were promised is that also that you should understand the elements of simple triangle benchmarking. I will show a couple of triangles and explain very briefly what they are. I had a very thorough presentation in Florence in 2015, IT Confidence Conference, where all the details of this triangle benchmarking were already explained. So I think that we can find it somewhere if needed. So I didn't include the same things now in this short presentation. And then also we can see some examples of the from the ISPSG data. But in the beginning, a couple of couple of uh, terms that need to be understood in similar way. So what is a benchmark? It's a reference point against which comparisons can be made. This definition is from ISO standards. And benchmarking means activity of comparing objects of interest to each other or against a benchmark to evaluate characteristics. So these are the official definitions. And these don't make things complicated. This is the ISO standard framework for IT project performance benchmarking framework. So the part one of this standard is uh, concepts and definitions. The series of benchmarking standards uh, contains four published international standards. One for data collection and one for reporting benchmarking results and then also one for benchmarking process. But this, this figure comes from, from part one, concepts and definitions. And what we can see here, there are a lot of components in this framework. But 
the most important thing in my opinion are the players of the game so <clears throat> on the um, and I will introduce their responsibilities and tasks briefly one by one anyways the most important is the benchmarking user if a bench, if no one is using benchmarking services then it doesn't happen so benchmarking users are the most important then they need a benchmarking service provider typically and then benchmarking service providers probably need some benchmarks published by other organizations so the benchmark providers is the third player and finally on the top on the right side there is the IT project team or developer team who develop software and actually provides the original data needed to benchmarking so they and let me see can i move this one somewhere oops not okay <clears throat> anyways player number one is the benchmarking user and benchmarking users are typically software acquiring organizations they may also be departments in a software product development company like nokia or microsoft or google still they they are the ones who are driving force of the whole benchmarking game they start benchmarking activities they keep those running and also they stop benchmarking when the time comes when they see that there is no more use for benchmarking at the moment or they probably change their focus from it project benchmarking to somewhere else uh, important thing is that the benchmarking user understands the metrics and their meaning and that way they will support the measurement if they don't know the metrics used in the benchmarking and if they don't understand what to do with the results then the support ends immediately probably even when it starts uh, benchmarking user also hires the service provider and sets the goals and scope for benchmarking so what kind of objects they are interested in and then the benchmark benchmarking user concludes the results together with the benchmarking service provider so there is in the framework quite close connection discussing about the results between these two two players and of course benchmarking user should make decisions about the required consequences if there are any and they also pay the bills so that also gives them power to be the and right to be the driving force of the whole game and then the second player is the benchmarking service provider typically consulting organizations 
and they provide instruments to benchmarking. So they provide methods for data collection and extraction, and they receive and validate the extracted data from the developer teams. Uh, benchmarking service provider also provides guides and training to the project team and benchmarking user. And they typically select the best matching available benchmarks that the benchmark providers have. And then also the, they provide the tools to produce the agreed, traceable, and easy to understand outcomes. So the outcomes from a benchmarking service provider should not be very magical <laughs> or mystical, but easy to understand. All these shells and requirements are part of the ISO standard, of course, and there are a lot of details. It's not very expensive to buy such a standard. This figure is taken from the standard anyways, but the copyright is on ISO. So benchmark provider is then the third player and they are usually research organizations or research institutes. Organizations may be national or international or industry, industry sector specific, or sometimes even corporation, in-house organizations, departments. And examples of of benchmark providers are, for example, ISBSG. FISMA has also collected data in during 30 years. And then IPA in Japan is one national organization which is collecting and collecting data and maintaining repository and issuing benchmarks. Uh, I would say also Standish Group as one of the one of the benchmark providers. And then really the tasks are collects data, maintains repositories and publishes benchmarks. So they they are simple and not too many activities. But without this kind of organizations, it would be very difficult to help organizations improve their health and wealth in the industry. And that is also for the developer organizations, supplier organizations, and the customer organizations. All can benefit from good data. Okay, the last player in this game is the project team or developer team. And they are typically representing some software supplier organization. The most important thing that they do is developing software. And that includes typically all, all software development lifecycle main tasks, like specifying requirements, designing and programming, testing, and also installing the software for delivery. Um, this developer team extracts required data to the benchmarking service provider. Uh, 
usually they they can be helped by some consultants in this task because they are not not often very skillful in measure measurement things sometimes they may be and they might submit data to benchmark providers like Pierre already introduced that ISBSG is willing to receive more data. And then these supplier organizations may also use this extracted data in their own process improvement activities. So, and that can be done even in frequent sprint rest retrospectives, which they are running anyways or in different post-mortem analysis where the supplier organization is thinking what they have done well or not so well. And then if you look at the figure, there are some threats based on these roles and the purity of the roles. I have seen all kind of attempts to stretch or mix or move radically these limits between the roles. And sometimes there are good incentives to do that but sometimes also not so not so nice some of the large benchmarking organizations are actually both benchmark providers and benchmarking service providers then the data is very often hidden so no one nobody knows what kind of data there really is so in this isbhc is quite poorly a benchmark provider and not doing a lot benchmarking service pro provision also some agile approaches are trying to put benchmarking user and project teams closely together and then the incentive to measure carefully and improve productivity somehow disappears often so <clears throat> sometimes of course the benchmarking user is very very rich organization they don't have to care about productivity or how much they spend money in software acquisition because it's just peanuts in the business and sometimes they hesitate benchmarking because they have no knowledge about the power of data and its its use Okay, and then we uh, still staying in the framework. Let's have a brief look at the object of benchmarking. So in the framework figure, the only, only word about the object is the IT project data, because this is IT project performance benchmarking standard and <clears throat> benchmarking user is the one who specifies the scope for benchmarking so how big thing they want to benchmark sometimes and i have seen this often in 20 years ago or 15 years ago the whole organization wants to be benchmarked sometimes 
the user wants to benchmark one large development program. Sometimes they want to benchmark several projects or all development projects in their organization. Even 10 weeks iterations might be easily benchmarked. In many, many organizations using scalable agile framework are running things in 10 weeks iterations or similar. Um, and then those can be also benchmarked. Or then two weeks, three weeks, four weeks development sprints. However, the agile development is organized. However, the bigger the object of benchmarking is, the more difficult it is to find any sensible benchmark that is close enough to your organization or your corporation that you are measuring. And also the more difficult it is to find the most effective improvement activities because there are so many complex relationships between all observations that you don't really know which mean would be best to achieve visible improvements. And then also, if small objects like sprints or projects cannot be measured and extracted reliably, how could you then measure the bigger things? Because large development programs and the IT development work in the organization consists of many smaller pieces of work. Also important in benchmarking always is that the objects of benchmarking shall be classified to be comparable with the benchmarks. Benchmark has, benchmarks have a lot of filters where you can find as good match as possible for your object of benchmarking. So this was everything about the, about the standard and framework, the players of the, of the game, benchmarking game. Then this is kind of case benchmarking setup. So I have put here my favorite customer, MFC, which is working on a public sector. They are running development programs where service-oriented architecture-based Java applications are developed. And this work is outsourced to supplier company. Uh, MFC is also um, having the product owners in their own organization. And those will be then working closely together with their favorite supplier company, which is on the top of the right side. And the favorite supplier company, they have several agile developer teams. They like to run three week sprints. So deliver every three weeks some new functionality. And they work uh, money per hour contract. And then they don't have measurement skills really. So they need to be helped in data collection. 
on the left left corner downstairs is the Fosan Partners, which is my company. So we have agreed about benchmarking with my favorite customer. And then our task is to choose the tools. So we are, and there are a lot of things in the corner. There is the triangle benchmarking. We have agreed that we show the results in triangles. And then we use functional size measurement. So we measure the functional size of outcomes in the projects that or sprints that we are measuring. And we will give rules how the elapsed effort will be collected. It needs to be collected so that we can learn something from the from the extracted data. Also, for all software development lifecycle uh, activities, we need to tell what, or, and we need to agree with the supplier company and with the customer that what is definition of ready when can you start design and programming when the specification is good enough and when the coding is good enough to start testing when testing of a piece of software is ready to be moved to installation process and also definition of done rules for everything and definition of done rules in this case always shall include also quality requirements of software they are not independent of functionality but they are bound to functionality Typically, they are same to all user interface elements and same to all uh, interface, external interfaces. But anyways, they must be part of definition of done. Then we have situation analysis method, ND21, that we will be using when we analyze the outcomes of the benchmarking. And then finally there is the FISMA top 10 metrics where we have FISMA has published the top 10 metrics and it can be found on the FISMA website on the in English clicking the in English on the FISMA website you can see what are the recommended top 10 metrics. Anyways, we have taken some of the metrics to this case from this FISMA top 10. Not many, we don't need many measurements, but <clears throat> some of them. And then we are using Northern Scope concept and experience service tool which also includes some benchmarks. So these are the things that FOSAM has agreed with MFC company or customer and then here in the middle between benchmarking service provider and benchmarking user we have this one data collection table where we collect the measurement results. And then these are actually updated together with the project team regularly. And then we 
measure the euros per function point and function point per month, meaning the productivity or cost, uh, cost efficiency and also delivery speed. And actually we also collect hours per function point, which is the productivity in turn. On the top, we are using Iceback and FISMA based benchmarks. Uh, there is the ISBSC productivity PDQ productivity data query tool and then a couple of other. There is the <clears throat> public because this MFC company or organization is working on a public sector. We are using the public sector data from experience database and also we are using triangle that is representing public sector. So this these all components must be discussed in the beginning. But I can tell that I have been using these things in several cases and it's not so difficult to get started as it looks. So the setup looks difficult, but it's not so. And <clears throat> what is good for anyone considering to become benchmarking user. It's the benchmarking service provider is responsible of 90% of the setup because they are bringing in, they are providing the instruments and they are selecting the benchmarks. And they usually have much better knowledge about those things than the benchmarking user organization. Then I have put here some uh, effort number. So establishment of an instance of benchmarking takes typically two or three days effort from the benchmarking service provider. And then some hours attention from the developer team and members of steering committee, just to get uh, introduced in the metrics and their meaning and the good ways to uh, ensure the data collection. And then the, so this is only one time during a benchmarking which may last one or from one to three years. So it's not something that must be repeated often. <clears throat> then supporting the IT development data collection usually takes from my company about one day per month to help uh, developer team in data collection and extraction and also validating the data. Then provision of progress reports to the benchmarking user and the other outcomes takes another one day per month. So typically two days per month from one expert who is running this. And then software development and program steering both which are the important things. They go on like business as usual. Benchmarking doesn't require big changes in those core activities. Okay, <clears throat> then here is one page about the case matrix that we choose from the FISMA top 10. So we used functional size measurement, so it's the size of the software delivered. 
and then we use development effort and cost. Those are things that we are collecting. And then delivery speed is one of the indicators showing and giving us indication and compare to compare with benchmarks. And then cost efficiency is the fourth that comes. And then on the up corner, there are the four different areas where FISMA is recommending these metrics. C is software project, or actually should be software development. And then software business is D. So all these four come from C and D. We are not measuring processes here or product. We don't have any product metrics in this case. Okay, and here are the case results. So, oh, actually these are not case results yet. These are the benchmarks that we selected. On the left, on the top, there are <coughs> some lines from ISBHC PD Go tool. You can see that we selected the functional size of the benchmark being from 250 to 750 function points, because we knew that that will be the size category where our development will match. And then we took primary programming language, which is Java, and also organization type, which is government, as close as possible to the public sector. And then we took two other benchmarks. On the top right, there is a data sample from experience service data set where are all the public sector projects that have been collected. On the left side, there is the euros per function point meaning the cost efficiency, and on the x-axis there is the function point per month, meaning delivery speed. And we can see that there are no fast and expensive projects collected from public sector in Finland, which would be on the top right corner. Uh, but in the left down corner there are slow and inexpensive, there are actually quite many projects in that corner. But there are also in some other parts of the map. And then on the bottom we have these triangles. So the idea of a triangle is that the height of the triangle is function points. And on the right side there is the duration of the development work and on the left side, um, bottom, the cost of development. And here we can see that the public sector top performance in Finland are developing um, 500 function points in five months. And the cost is 125,000 euros. So means 100 function points per month and 250 euros per function point. And then in the bottom there is the shit happens thing, which means that sometimes you get only 300 function points and it takes two years and the cost is 1.2 million euros. Those happen, they are not on the map, but uh, I have seen those. And then there, then there is the public sector average, which is 500 function points in one measured object of benchmarking. Uh, the average delivery speed is 42 function points per month. Average 
cost is 500 euros per function point. So in that, um, I used almost 1000 projects to provide that triangle. And here are now the results of the case. So what happened? Um, the favorite software company developed 694 function points in 13.7 months. And the cost was 912,000 euros. And you can see that the uh, achieved cost was 1,313 euros per function point and 51 function points per month. The colors in the triangle show that the cost was quite high, so it's red. And the speed was close to average 51 function points. Actually, that was a little bit better than in average. Then we have also put the star in the, on the map on the right up corner. And in the bottom, there are the um, findings from ISPHC PDQ tool, where we can see that the, when we compare with other Java projects, this was not very productive and the speed was not really good. It, it was below median. And if we compare with other government projects, then also there, the productivity wasn't so delivery rate was not as good as in average. But uh, speed of delivery was actually better than the median in Icebox data. Okay, so these were the results. And about the conclusions, I'm not going to tell. So what, what they decided. Anyways, we can see that the things could be much better. They were not glorious. <clears throat> and it might be useful to look at the software development productivity factors of FISMA ND21 method because there are things like how the, pro, how the development work is organized um, and how the development process is working and also the people skills in different tasks. And, uh, and the fourth group there is the product quality requirements. So there may be some explanations and also some things to improve in the future. And the, always the conclusions and following decisions depend on the goals and scope of the instance of benchmarking and the benchmarking user organization. So, so that was everything at this time. So thank you.